God bless you, and you may be seated. Thank you, Brother Nazarian. Wasn't that absolutely amazing? Excellent, excellent. And I, I want to give honor to all of these amazing graduates. First of all, I want to say that you are valuable to every one of us. You're valuable to the kingdom. You are the most likely to succeed. You are God's treasure in earth. And I want to say that we value every one of you. We love you. We esteem you highly. You're some of the most talented, uh, the highest of quality. Acorns never fall far from the trees. And um, I would like to give special honor to all of the parents. Um, Madison and Ryan, both of you all did absolutely amazing. Very, very awesome. Very great. Madison, I want to commend you on being willing and being bold and being courageous and loving truth enough to take it to where you go to school. That is very important. And uh, you are one of the most gifted and talented singers uh, in Pentecost. There's no doubt about it. There's no telling what you're going to become. And Orion, you're a statesman. Uh, when you started talking about uh, not wanting to get up in the morning, I thought, wow, he and Sister Scoggins have some real similarities. <laughs> I said, man. <clears throat> but uh, when, I, when I tell you, you were absolutely amazing this morning. There's no telling what all of you are going to become. And to uh, the young ladies, you're, you're beautiful. And uh, I want to say to every one of you how proud we are to be your pastor. And, and I mean it. Those are not just words. And they, they will have meaning to you. Because uh, this morning as we look unto the Word of God for uh, counsel and for wisdom, uh, there's no doubt in my mind that if you heed what you have already been taught, if you heed what you have already heard, that every one of you will excel. You're not going to know what jail is like. You're not going to know what prison is like. Uh, you're not going to have five or six marriages because you have heard. There, there is something that has been placed inside of each and every one of you. And if you'll remember the things that you have been taught, uh, the instruction of your father, the law of your mother, according to Proverbs 1, if you will continue wherever you go to never forget the things that you have been instructed. And, and you did it so masterfully. Uh, you started with uh, thanking the Lord for his commitment, love to you, and then you thank, thank your mom and dad, and rightfully so, because none of us would be here without parents and their dedication and their resolve and if you ever received perfect attendance as a, uh, in elementary school, you did not do it. <laughs> Your parents did it. Can I get a witness, parents? Your parents did it because you didn't want to get out of bed, did you, Ryan? And if you had perfect attendance, you have a wonderful mom and dad that made sure that you were at school every day. And so, and then you, you thanked the th Sunday school teachers, and you thanked pastor, and you thanked all of the people that had, and the church, that had planted and had put valuable things into your life. And if you'll hold on to those things and, and, and realize these are values that are not for sale, no devil in hell, no person is going to be able to take that from me. I'm going to value what I have been taught. I am going to love the heritage that has been presented to me. I'm joyfully going to uh, continue to live for God and to love him with all of your heart. And the future's bright. There's no telling already. Now, Brother Nazarian talked about Ethan pursuing a career. He's pursuing more than a career. He's pursuing my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> and, 
And if you don't end up at Pixar, you'll know why. There's a praying mama and dad somewhere. No, I, I, but I, I want every one of these uh, young people to achieve their dreams. Can I get a witness? Everything you've ever dreamed and hoped for, we want you to achieve those dreams. We normally uh, will go to 1030. That is, that is what we'll, this is a little unique in that my role is to give you a charge and I always uh, want to, to do what I've been asked to do uh, no matter where I'm at. Whether I'm preaching here or whatever, I want to stay within the confines of that expectation. But I do believe that the Lord this morning uh, would have me to to say something to you, and um, some of it may be repetitive uh, from the adult class that i 've been teaching for the last several weeks, but in the book of first Timothy chapter one, verse nineteen and twenty, Paul is giving a charge to Timothy, and he simply says this, holding faith and a good conscience, which some having put away concerning faith made shipwreck. I'm going to tell you there's not a devil big enough to strip away your faith. There's not an agnostic. There's not an atheist. There is not anybody that can strip away your faith. You, but you, according to Paul's charge to Timothy, can put away your faith. And the charge was don't put away your faith, hold faith, and a good conscience, which some have put away. In other words, they put it away. I, I don't need this value. I don't need, need what I've been taught. I don't need this doctrine anymore. I don't need this belief. And they put it away. And he said, they have made shipwreck. In the book of second, uh, uh, or chap, uh, 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 11, he said, These things command and teach. Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers. Notice this. In word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, and in purity. Let no man despise. Thy youth. That word despise in Greek is disesteem. Disesteem. I've been teaching for the last several weeks on the importance of image and self esteem. And here the writer said, Don't let anybody disesteem your youth. And the word youth in Greek is newness. Don't let anybody disesteem or think little of your youth, your vibrance, your excitement, your enthusiasm, your hope, your dream. He said, let no man think little of that or cause you to not desire to have self-respect for the dream that God has placed inside of you. Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers in word. That's this precious word of God. And in conversation. That's your daily activity. It's not just your talk, but it would also include your walk. In spirit, in faith, in purity. Till I come, give attendance to reading to exhortation, to doctrine. And he said, neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given by thee in prophecy with the laying on of hands of the presbytery. And I think though Paul was writing to a young man that would assume a very powerful place in ministry, I can hear the words of J.T. Pugh when I was just a new convert Everyone in this church is a minister. God may not call you to a pulpit ministry, and then again he may, but every 
one of you is a minister. You are called by Almighty God. I want to charge you, first of all, to love God with all of your heart, your soul, and your mind. And never put away that relationship. But hold that relationship. Nourish that relationship. How do I nourish my relationship with God? By praying every day. Every day will I seek him. David said it like this, every day will I praise him. I'm going to praise him every day. I'm not, I'm not going to just haphazardly go through life, but I'm going to make prayer intentional. I will be intentional about praying. I will pray every day. I want to charge you to pray every day. Every day. Every day I want to praise him. I want to thank him for his goodness, for his grace, for his power, because truly he is the alpha. He is the omega. He is the beginning. He is the end of all things. Some of you are going to be great, but you'll never be great by yourself because you can't do anything by yourself, but you can do all things through Christ, which will strengthen you. He'll give you the strength. He'll give you the power. So I charge you to, to love God. I charge you to pray every day and to give him uh, all of your heart. I want to charge you to do something else. I want to charge you to value yourself because the world will do everything it can to devalue yourself and make you think little and in, insignificant that I don't matter uh, I don't have anything to offer. I don't have the right name. Can I remind every one of you, if you ever think that thought again, tell yourself, I do have the right name. Jesus has been applied to my life in bad. I've got the right name. I remember hearing a story of a young man walking up uh, to the grocery store, uh, and he said, boy, uh, they said, welcome to the store. He said, my dad owns this store. They said, Really? Is is your uh, dad's last name Dillard's? Uh, no, he said it, it would be Jesus Christ. <laughs> My dad owns everything. Your dad owns the campus you're going to be walking on. He owns everything. Heaven and earth b- belong to him. And I want you to value yourself. I want you to understand that that you are amazing and God God so loved you that he gave his entire life for you. He gave his, if you would have been the only individual left on the planet, he would have still died because that's how much he loved humanity. He died for you. He loves you. And so you, you have to understand if Jesus loves me and if Jesus is willing to forgive me, then I've got to get over me. I've got to get over myself. I've got to love what Jesus loved. And I, I, I want to charge you to value yourself and to not think small and in, 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 in adequate thoughts about yourself. Because Paul had it in Revelation. Don't, know, don't let anybody disesteem you. Don't let anybody, there's going to be all kind of people that's going to try to talk down to you. And, and, but he said, don't let anybody despise your youth. You're, you're still going to need your mom and dad, still going to need a pastor, still going to need mentors and guides. But I want you to understand, you've got Jesus Christ inside of you. And that's a powerful component. When you realize that, that he loves me and he gave himself for me. And so I, I am so thankful that my daughter is here today. She didn't have to fight the demons that I wrestled with in my life. And many of you are not the, the byproduct of, of great dysfunction, but you have been raised in intact, godly homes where uh, the Word of God has been emphasized, where prayer and praise has been emphasized, where living for God, where holiness and separation from the world has been emphasized. And, and you, are, you are blessed in abundance to have that kind of teaching. But I, I grew up a, a, a byproduct of great dysfunction. And so poor self-image and low self-esteem became the order of, of the day for me. In fact, 
uh, my, my, my posture when I first arrived at church uh, was my head was down and my shoulders were stooped. What I am so thankful is you don't have stoop shoulders and you don't have a bowed head. Because you have been affirmed, you have been valued, you have been appreciated, you have been loved, you have have been supported, you have been told, son, there's no telling what you're going to do in your life. Hannah, your mom and dad have looked you in the eye since you were a baby and said, "You're, you're beautiful, you're gorgeous, but you're not only beautiful outside, you're beautiful inside. There's no telling. You can be a doctor. You can be a brain surgeon. You can do anything. You have been affirmed. David, you have been valued. Every one of you have been loved and respected. And your parents, nobody can sing like you. You sing like a bird. You are precious. We don't have any excuse to be beating ourselves up and listening to lies within our own self. We ought to say, if Jesus believes in me and my mom and dad believes in me, I'm not going to let society cheapen me. I'm not going to let a boyfriend cheapen me. I'm not going to let a one-night situation cheapen me. I've given, oh boy, I feel like preaching up in here right now. I'm going to lift up my head. I'm not going to be intimidated when I get in an environment that doesn't believe like I believe. I'm going to have my shoulders up. I'm going to have my head up. I'm not going to be cowing, moving to a corner. I'm going to be a light for everybody to see. I'm going to be a proud example. Jesus chose me. He put his law in my heart. I'm not bowing down. I'm not, I'm not going to feel inadequate or, or inferior. I'm going to walk in that room smiling loving everybody and adding value to everybody I meet. Hey, how are you? You look great. Good to see you. Can I get a witness, somebody? I charge you, don't listen to your self-talk. Guard your self-talk. Al Andrews, who started Porter's Call to help uh people in Nashville who went bust and didn't know how to recover. Many of them would become alcoholics. And he, he would interview 1,000 people. He asked them, what does your inner voice say? And found out that nobody's inward voice tells you the truth. And especially when you start our challenge to go to another level or do something you've never done before, you're going to fear and doubt is going to show up because nobody's internal, not even a preacher's voice. When he's about to do something or take a stand, that voice will sometimes say, you can't do it. They're not going to like you. You're going to make somebody mad or, or nobody loves you and nobody cares and my teacher don't like me and, and I want you to guard against that self-talk because yourself will lie to you and say, I'm not going to listen to that garbage. I'm going to affirm myself. If Jesus has affirmed me, if my mom and dad has affirmed, I'm going to start affirming myself. Get behind me. I'm not listening to that garbage. I'm not processing. For years, I'd look in the mirror. I asked my wife when we first got married, I said, honey, am I good looking? She said, you got a great personality. (laughs) But I'm like the kid. I want to be like the kid that says, I can't wait till tomorrow. And somebody says, why? Because I get better looking every day. (laughs) Hallelujah. (laughs) Had a kid and people will help you. Be negative to yourself. You know, I've had this split between my teeth and a kid came up and said, I heard evil Knievel. Some of y'all don't even know who that is. But he used to jump cars and tried to jump the Grand Canyon like they killed himself. Just craziness. And a kid says, I heard evil Knievel's got a contract to jump that split. I said, when he gets through jumping mine, he's going to jump yours. (laughs) Yes. Can I get a witness, somebody? You got to guard against that self-talk. You got to talk back to yourself. Get behind me, Satan. Get behind me, Nathan. I look great. I'm, I look good enough. Good enough for her for 35 years coming up this week. Come on. You're awesome. 
You may not have the guns that everybody else has. I'm talking guns. I don't mean guns. I'm talking guns like that. BB guns. But you got to guard against your self-talk. You got to understand, I, if I don't value myself, nobody else is going to value me. And when you start cheapening yourself, people will start cheapening you. And when you devalue yourself and start talking down, they will start, there, there's a chorus that will join you. Yeah, you are ugly. Yeah, you are gross. Yeah, you can't do it. Yeah, you are stupid. I don't want to be around people like that. I'm going to guard against my self-talk. I'm going to become what Jesus Christ said I am. I'm going to work. I'm going to pray. I'm going to read my Bible. I'm going to hold on to this doctrine. I'm going to be a worshiper. And I charge you to don't stay home during finals from church. I charge you to go to church. What's an hour and a half going to do when you, what is an hour? I charge you to be faithful to the house of God, even at college. Can I get a witness, somebody? Easy for you to say, pastor, we waste more time, you'll waste more time, but you've got to get organized and get it together, but I'm going to the house of God because I'd rather need a miracle from God I'd rather get up and have to cram and him and and say, Lord, I'm depending on you, but I'm going to the house of God. I'm not going to forsake the assembling together. We're in the end time. I'm going to be getting at college all kind of junk to conform to the image of this world. I've got to go to church and be reminded of who I am, what I stand for, what I live for. Don't forget about God when you get at college. And I want to give honor to all of you who, who have remembered the Lord. I'm, I'm so thankful. This is about the graduates. This is not about my family. And I understand that. But I do want to give honor to Leah for going to church at college. Joining. It was the hardest thing I did. And I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you parents, when you find out where your child, if they're in another city, you go and have lunch like we did. When I looked at Brother Shea, man, and said, today, you're her pastor. I, I'm not pastor. You're pastor. I started bawling. It's like, oh, here she is. You take care of her. But the importance of that is that it connected her to a man of God. It connected her to a pastor in that environment. And I want to charge every one of you, connect with that pastor, connect with that church. Don't, don't be at college all by yourself. And if you, you get the, the privilege of staying here, stay connected to pastor. Stay connected to pastor. If you go away, connect to that pastor. Get a man of God in your life and be faithful to the house of God. The Lord's going to bless you. He's going to keep you. I feel it. I feel the Holy Ghost here today. Some of you are going to write books. Some of you are going to invent. Some of you are going to come up with amazing uh, situations. Don't let anybody tell you that you can't get your dream. Don't let anybody tell you you can't. You are in a very unique place in a very powerful place. And I close with this. You're in a very unique place as graduates. The whole, your whole life is before you. John A. Cuff in his book entitled Start, and I, I would challenge you, that's a good one. Read it. It, it. it will help you. He said, in your 20s, you're learning. In your 30s, you're editing. In your 40s, you're mastering In your 50s, you're harvesting, and in your 60s, you'll be guiding. He said, so how can a 28-year-old invent something that could change the world? How could a 27-year-old or a 21-year-old like Tiger Woods or a 21-year-old like Bill Gates be Bill Gates and Tiger Woods be Tiger Woods? He said two very important principles. 
One, they started earlier. And the other, they stood on the shoulders of giants. When you understand that you didn't get to where you're at by yourself, that where your parents are strategically has set some of you up to advance very quickly. The things that have been placed in you from the standpoint of the church, but the business successes of some of your family members, the faithfulness to God of some of your family members, has put you in a position that others did not get the opportunity. How in the world at 21 could he win the PGA, Tiger Woods, with a preposterous 12-stroke victory? How in the world? Because he had a putter in his while he was yet in time. Some of you have been doing things. You've been taught principles. Would you stand with me? Not all of you will be preachers. Some of you will get master's degrees in certain particular places of education, some doctorates. But I believe every one of you are going to impact the world. And you cannot waste what has been given to you. I want you to understand that you are valued you have been trained, you have been taught. Ryan, God literally used you to confirm eight years ago. I said, Lord, I know I'm going to try out for that church. But you received the Holy Ghost on the very weekend that I came as a confirmation and witness that there is going to be a revival here. There's going to be a continued outpouring of God's Spirit. Every one of you have prophecies on your life. Every one of you have destiny on your life. Every one of you are valuable. Your dad is one of the most faithful men in this church. Your dad. And your mom, of course, in Sunday school and Christian education. If you would, just come and join me close here. And I want to say to every one of you, don't let backsliding ever be in your vocabulary. You're going to make mistakes. Your pastor's made many. But I charge you to always get up, dust yourself off. And continue. Jesus Christ loves you more than you could ever imagine. I used to have the idea that Jesus was trying to take me out. That if I made a big enough mistake, that somehow I would immediately turn into a reprobate that would not be able to feel God. I wrestled with that for about two years that... If I make a big enough mistake, Jesus won't love me anymore. He'll just somehow say, you went too far this time, and that's it. I want to say to every one of you, that is a lie from the pit of hell. You will make mistakes. You will err. But he's not here to destroy you. He's here to help you. And so always, as you have been instructed today, get up and start over. A lot of times you won't want to come to the house of God because of guilt and condemnation. And you'll say, I'm not worthy. But there's not one sinner, there's not one saint that was worthy enough to start Christianity in their life. And there's not anybody worthy for Christianity to be continued in their life. Paul had a revelation. He said, um, I'm chief of sinners. He never stopped classifying him. 
himself from a life of sinful behavior. He said, of whom I'm the chief. Christ died for sinners of whom I am the chief. Now, he wasn't sinning. He wasn't going out living a life of immorality. But he said, I'm, I'm still imperfect. And we're all sinners saved by grace. That's not a license to sin. That's not a license to go crazy and to do anything and live any way we want to live. But I want to tell you, when you fall, you have an advocate with the Father. Jesus Christ will pick you up. If you'll back up just a moment, I'm going to ask all the men of God to join me here in the front. Oh, and Brother Milligan, as one of our esteemed board members, with you would come and join me. I, I want us to get the oil, if we would, and I want to anoint every one of these graduates with oil. I want to say to you that you have no past, only a future. And the Lord is going to help you and to bless you. And this has been a wonderful day. Brother Nazarian did an amazing job this morning and said some very powerful words. And today, I know that every one of you, God's going to help you become what you desire to be. And you're not, it's not hard because I think a lot of people will tell you, find your purpose. No, 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 no. I totally disagree with that. It's not find your purpose. It's find your passion. And find the gifts that God has placed in you. And if you can't use your gifts within the confines of Scripture, then you need to find another career. In other words, if it takes you out of the context of Scripture, you're not in the right career. But you've got to be able. It's got to fit that Word of God. It's not making your life. You've got to make your life fit the Word of God. It's not making the Word of God fit your life. I want to fit the Word of God. But it's not. It's your passion. If God puts a writing passion in you and there's a gift to write, it's not rocket science. Don't find, don't, you don't have to, I'm going to spend my whole life looking for my purpose. No, I'm going to look for my gifts. I'm going to look for my, my passion. And I'm going to find a place where I can put those passions and those purpose. It may be starting water wells in Haiti. It may be feeding the hungry in Africa. It may be whatever. It may be a children's home, whatever, and move toward that passion. Let that passion drive you. You'll never get weary. You'll never get tired. You'll never give up if you let your passion push you. I'm going to find my passion. I'm going to get take these this talent. I'm going to take this ability and, and I'm going to take these hands and I'm going to get on a computer and I'm going to make the first animated apostolic cartoon that's doctrinally sound. Am I in the right place? And I'm going to take this singing voice that God has given to me. I'm not going to waste it. I'm going to give it to God. I'm going to keep it in the kingdom. I'm going to sing for Him. I'm going to dedicate my vessel completely to him. I'm going to give him my passion. I'm going to give him my gifts. I'm going to give him my talents. I'm going to give him everything. Would you just raise your hands, graduates? And would you bring the oil? And we're going to pray for every one of these precious graduates. I want you to come behind me. I'm going to anoint them with oil. And then I want us to pray for them. I'm asking the parents to come and join us to come behind these graduates. Would you stretch your hands toward them? Father, we thank you today for your goodness, for your grace, for your compassion, for your mercy, for your goodness. I love you today. I thank you for your goodness. I thank you for every one of them. Thank you for using them today, not by might and not by power, 
but by your spirit, Lord, I worship. Lord, I praise you. I thank you for every blessing. I thank you for your goodness. I thank you for your grace. I thank you for everything that you have done for every one of these wonderful young people. Bless them and keep them. May the blessings of God continue to be poured out upon them. Bless their mothers and their fathers. Make a way. Give them favor, O Lord. In the name of Jesus, favor them. In the name of Jesus, I thank you and I praise you. May the angels of the Lord bless them and guide them and keep them all the days of their life. Let's worship the Lord together. What a power of the Holy Ghost. Lord, let them believe that with you they can do anything. Anoint their minds. Anoint their spirits. Protect them. Preserve them. May they forever embrace this apostolic truth. May they love it. May they guard it. May they protect it. In the name of Jesus. In the name of the Lord. Thank you for using and blessing them today. Valuable. They are valuable. They are valuable to the kingdom. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I agree, my desire. Oh, let's clap our hands and celebrate. Is to be what you call me to be, and that's what I.